Well, I think we're in situations where Mariupol is essentially taken by the Russians, less for the um, remaining defenders around the steelworks and the civilian population that are in the city and, and still trapped. So there's, there is nothing that's going to happen without the consent of the, the Russians to a humanitarian evacuation or the end of the siege of the steelworks. Um, something deeply significant happened in the last 24 hours, and you are a much bigger expert upon it uh, than I will ever be. In geopolitical terms, how significant was that test launch of the Satan II ICBM missile? So it was symbolically significant, but not a surprise to anybody. Um, the US and others know this system exists. Um, it's a super heavy intercontinental ballistic missile, so it's irrelevant to the war uh, in Ukraine. It was a messaging to the West that Russia remains a major nuclear power and um, will often uh, raise the prospect of nuclear weapons whenever it feels threatened. But it was probably time to coincide with the fall of Mariupol and the uh, approach of the Russian Orthodox um, Easter celebrations in a, in a package of news that was meant to play well to a Russian domestic audience. Uh, which, which Putin is desperately in need of. It takes us back then to the pre-Gorbachev Reagan in Iceland era because Washington was tipped off that this was going to happen. But just a little reminder that an intercontinental ballistic missile with, with, with all of those independently targeted warheads can cross the Pacific or the Atlantic and rain hell upon the United States of America. Yes, that's absolutely right, or, or, uh, or indeed Europe or anywhere else um, on the planet. So this it represents um, you know, another step in nuclear deterrence, and we should recognize that there are many other countries in the world that have nuclear weapons that are not party to the Cold War you know, nuclear uh, arms control arrangements. So nuclear proliferation is just a part of the modern world.